Undercover pods or press functions. They're undercover because you don't know about them probably, but if you may know about them, so if you do, you probably are undercover too, because you're cool. Um, so looping with pods, uh, you can do some cool things. This is the pods API, um, but some of, the, some of the things we had in pods API is, is, is really useful as a utility. And in this case, uh, we have a function method called zebra, and uh, that could just tell you if you're an odd zero or one sort of, uh, uh, you might have a flag before, it might in PHP, you might have had, had to store a, something like odd equals false, and flip it or check to see if the x is zero or one, or if it's odd number. But this does it for you, so it just, we internally store this as you do your fetch loop. Uh, you can also do uh, something called MTH, and uh, I always call it. And it's just like CSF, uh, sorry, CSS int child, and it essentially replicates that entire functionality for the plus and, and negative stuff. So in the, in the format, it, it would be, um, I forgot what it, A, B, N. So 4N basically means the fourth item, and the plus or negative is the offset. So every four items in this format, I'll, I'll throw a class on it called fourth. But I could say 4N plus one means every four items after the first one, throw a class called fourth. So you could do some pretty cool things. If you're familiar with CSS, this is a really useful um, method to, to use. And it's just automatic, it happens automatically for you. Um, so that's pretty cool. Um, filtering list and grabbing properties with WP list filter and WP list pluck. Those are really cool functions as well. Uh, you can get a, a, an array of objects or arrays. And uh, for instance, in list filter, you can filter by uh, arrays that have the color of red. In this case, we only had one item, so it pulls that one array. But if you have multiple items of that same uh, color as red, you can pull all those items out of that. Pretty useful. Uh, pluck is also really useful if you just want to get one property out of the array. In this case, we're just going to get all of the names, and uh, we only want those. We don't want the colors or anything else. So we get that right there. And you can Combine those so you can do a list filter, get all the color of red, and then do a list pluck and get the name out of all those. So, pretty useful. Um, I I would definitely say I when I first started development, this was probably something I would have really loved to enjoy. Um, two other really cool manipulation things for data is add to or remove from. Uh, you could already do save and add within the pods and API, but Add to is really special because you can add a category to a list of already existing category items. So let's say you look up your article and you want to add one category to it, but you don't want to change all the other categories and you don't want to look up what those categories are currently and do all the extra work. Run this one line function, done. Inside this function, you'll find that the code for it is like 20, 30 lines. So save yourself a lot of trouble. Uh, you can also add numbers to Number field. So let's say you want to just increment a counter, plus one, done. Uh, you can add time to a date field. So let's say every 10 days you run something uh, and then you increment the things, say when one of the next date is. Uh, you could do plus five days or plus 10 days, or you can put um, a number of other formats in there. It all uses stir to time function. Uh, you can also add append content to a field like post content here. I'm just going to add two more lines and then add more text to it. So, pretty useful. I mean, I probably won't use it often, but to be able to do it is pretty nice. Uh, you can do the same thing but re reverse. So you can remove a category and say, let me remove one, two, three from the category, but only if it exists and, and keep the existing ones. Um, you can subtract a number from a number field. Uh, and the same thing for the next date, uh, but in that case it might be a little bit different. Um, which also is and has, is really useful as well. Um, I like these ones because they're sort of condensed versions of check and see if a value equals something, but in a way that it's normalized. So I can check to see if the count is 14, um, but I don't have to get the value of the field and then check it against the value. So it's just shorthand. Um, I run one method instead of one method, and then I check to see if it's equal to something. Um, same for date, uh, same for content. Uh, has is almost like it, except it's not checking to see, in, in the case, like if I were to say pod is category one, two, three, I would, I would only be checking to see if this article is only category one, two, three. 
But if I do has, I will check to see if it has one, two, three in any of the categories it has. And if it does, I could has category one, two, three. Um, and then you could also check to see if uh, post content contains a, a string value, um, that sort of stuff. But that, those two are really useful as well. Uh, we have some media functions here, uh, one of which Phil mentioned to me that I didn't know that's actually really useful. Um, there's pods image, which you can throw a field value into, uh, or you can pass an image ID or a GUID, uh, and then you can choose a specific size you want to output. And then a really useful part here is you can actually define the, the default. So you can easily just output an image, and then if the post has no thumbnail, then always output this default thumbnail. And that's really useful. Uh, you can import an attachment from the URL. So you just simply run this function, say what URL it is, if you want to give the post parent, if you want to set it as a featured post thumbnail for that, you can do that. Uh, you could resize images on demand, or resize, uh, or re-resize. Um, that's useful if you actually have a size that's not registered inside your add image sizes. You can actually add custom sizes and then use them like this so that you generate them only if they don't exist. Um, and then the one that Phil let me know about is WP Prepare Attachment for GS. And what that does is it gets you every single piece of information from an attachment that you would ever need to work with. It gets you all the sizes, all the URLs of the sizes, all the width and heights of the sizes, uh, all text, uh, all the meta, it gets you so much stuff. Put that it's in really the useful. poorly named function category for sure. Yeah, it's <laughs> not just for JS. It's not just for JS. It's not even preparing. It's just outputting so much data that you can really use it. And I think that's it. That's it for those. All right, so next up, we are going to go through in uh, Q&A. Uh, basically, if you have any question with, in regards to pods at all, uh, right now it is 3.36, you have until 5 p.m. to get whatever you may have a question about resolved. Because we are here, at least three of us right now, to help you and uh, make sure everyone's attended to. So if you have questions, um, please raise your hand right now. And if you, it's all right if you have other questions later, they'll, they'll be fine. So you have one? Yeah. All right. Um, well, this, this relates to uh, what Benjamin was just demonstrating in his, uh, his little mistake up there uh, that I found with, with delete versus uh, delete all items. That there, there, there seems to be like, like hangover stuff that that been created already that then I like lose track of it and how it you find that you can kill stray fields and taxonomies and stuff that have been created and lost. Okay. Um, we don't have a cleanup. Uh, that would be great to have uh, at least a screen where it says these are ones that pods don't hand doesn't handle. Are you do you want to delete them? That'd be a great screen to have. Um, right now we in the, in the pod edit. Uh, uh, so hey, there's locations. <laughs> um, so you can delete the pod, which will delete it entirely. But what it doesn't do is it does not delete your your data if it is a custom post type. It'll keep the data, it'll keep your meta, it's only deleting that it's in pods. Um, or you can delete all items. And what that does is it deletes all of those items from the post. So no longer will it be in the post and all the meta will be gone as well. Right. Um, so if you that's really useful if you want to reset the entire content type entirely. Mm -hmm. Like um, especially if you're using an advanced content type, you can you run that and it'll truncate the whole table, delete all the relationships, all that stuff. So it's pretty useful. Especially if you're doing it via code, this function right here is also available through reset in the pods objects where you can reset it via code. And I did that for a project where every day or two they got thousands of events from an API that would never pass you the real event IDs. And so all you could do was reset every time before you were about to import it. So <laughs> that was kind of interesting um, and tough. Um, but uh, yeah, so. That could be pretty useful, but uh, but like you said, you can't delete unused meta values from uh, items that pods uh, maybe uh, extending or, or creating. So that'd be a good idea, though. 